Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about mind tricks that both Kirby and I play on ourselves in order to, I guess, continue to pursue or achieve financial success. But with this starting off, I'm going to pass it over to you, Kirby, because uh, maybe I'm not so self-aware of me doing this and I can learn more about myself. Yeah, uh, so one mind trick that most people and people that you know, trying to live financially comfortable, they do, they make they self believe that they make less than what they really do. Um, so like one example is let's say I know I net five thousand a month. Let's use that as an example. I will live life like I only net four thousand dollars a month, and I live off of four thousand dollars a month, and I put that thousand dollars a month to the side every month, and then eventually you know, put it into an investment account or I'll put it into a savings account. I mean, savings account, investment account or whatever, or just stack it up to store money to buy real estate property. So people that, that have money, like when you call your, you know, your rich uncle or your auntie, you know, that always got it when you're in bad times, that's what they're doing. They just live on when they, they say live on less than you make is trick yourself that you make less than what you actually make. And that's, you know, just one way I have plenty more like um, one that I always do when when it comes to regards of money um, is most people believe in savings accounts. And I always tell people, especially in the class or whatever, is never put your money in a savings account. And the only reason why I say that is because it's easily accessible, because all you got to do is go on your phone and transfer the money from your savings to your checking when it's something you want to do or you deem a quote unquote emergency. So how do I mind trick myself? Instead of putting it in a savings account, I put it because most people got use third party brokerage firms like, you know, like Weeble, like uh, Robinhood, um, Schwab, Thinkorswim or something like that. So I say take that extra money that you're saving every month and put it into a brokerage account. The reason why, and the only reason why, and I'm not saying invest the money or do nothing with that. The reason why I say that is because to transfer that money back to you, it takes three days. So that gives you, when you go in there, it just does two things. First you, because it's in a brokerage account, you think you're investing even though you're not. So you don't quick to say, oh, I could just transfer the money from the brokerage account back to me. And the second reason is, when you transfer the money from a third party brokerage account back to your bank account, it takes roughly two or three days. No matter even if you're using the same brokerage in your the bank that you use, it usually takes two or three days. In that time, you can talk yourself out of making a stupid purchase. So that's another way you mind trick yourself to, hey, I don't have the money because it's going to take too long. And by the time that event comes, the money won't be there. So I just can't go. So those are, you know, two quick money uh tips that i use to mind trick myself to not spend money that i don't i didn't intend to spend but i'll tell myself oh it's an emergency so go ahead and spend it okay yeah i can i can see those especially like the one you pointed out to me before this video was i tricked myself into thinking i make less or have less so i act like i'm broke and yeah, those are things I do or like, I can definitely see what you said about emergencies where I'll trick myself into, or like I'll act like something isn't an emergency so I could keep holding on to the money and figure out other ways to solve the problem so that I don't have to come out of pocket. Yeah, there's different things. It's it's interesting because I, I do them, I guess, subconsciously. Like I'm not even thinking I'm mind tricking myself. I'm just... It's just like developing right. habits so that I don't, I'm always looking for a way to not have to come out of pocket, but still fix the problem. And then when I see people come out of pocket, I think they're just making excuses. Like, I don't think they're thinking hard enough because I've seen people like, oh, I'll just pay for it. Or like, like say uh, people that they have a car that's always breaking down and they want to get another car so they'll buy a brand new car or say a certified pre-owned car that still costs quite a bit of money compared to what they're making rather than buying a 
older used car for less cash not having a payment and they don't want to do that option because they want to look good in front of other people and so i would go the cheaper route because it only makes more financial sense to me in order to sustain and continue to grow what i've already got and so i think that those people or the majority of people are always making excuses for themselves rather than i guess doing those mind tricks in order to um conserve their capital right and i mean people take it they take the same mindset as the government throw money at the problem throw money at the problem i mean i see it at nauseam you know people will sit there with a the car they at their last payment and then now magically magically their car broke down soon they made the last payment but instead of saying okay now i don't have to pay the five six seven hundred dollars a month on car payments i'm just going to fix the car they trick themselves to saying oh well you're always going to have payments so what just go get a new car that's what people do yep. that's what broke people do the savers is looking at okay well i might have to throw $2,100 at this car payment, I mean, at, to fix this issue, but then I'll have, you know, another two, three years with the car. And if you do the math, two or three years, that's 36 months times uh, six, $700 a month. That's what? That's, that's a lot. What, 70,000? Yeah, 70,000? Yeah. Let me, I'll do the math because I went to public school. 700 times 36 is... So $25,000, I'll have another $25,000 left over to do whatever the hell I want to. But broke mindset is, oh, I'll just keep making payments. I'll keep making payments. I'll get a new car. I mean, I've literally seen people close to me. They pay off a car. Then they pay off a car and then they just stop acting like a car owner and then just like, oh, forget it. It's paid off. And then let run the car into the ground. And then they be like, oh, I'll just go get another car payment. Not knowing the missed opportunity, the opportunity cost that would have came if you just fixed that car and then saved those monthly payments over and over and over again. That's just ways that people mind trick themselves into different aspects and avenues. But usually the grandma who always have it, they always live on less than they make, the uncles, people are not spending their way to wealth. Uh, another one that I do is uh, my, my mindset is when I have a stack of cash and I don't have it invested anywhere, I'm always saying, I don't sit there and look like, oh, well, I can sit back and be comfortable. I say, I'm about to deploy this crap because I wanna have the same mindset and grind of being broke. Don't nothing make you feel broke than looking at your bank account. So if I have a stash of cash sitting there, I deploy it to most likely go buy another rental property or if i see an investment like i think it was like last friday i'm just sitting there i'm looking at my account i'm like wait this is too much money just in there i just went to a stock that i seen that was just you know at an attractive price and i knew it had some growth opportunity that i've been holding for a minute and i just bought more shares then i went out and then i found another property to buy as a rental property i want to see it at zero so every time i log into that bank account because I know I have cash flow coming in on the other side. But every time I log into that bank account, I want to see close to zero as possible. So it will keep me in that mindset of grind, go get it. You're broke. Grind, go get it. You're broke. Grind, go get it. You're broke. But people will start seeing cash and the next thing you know, they'll start getting lazy. You know, you see it in sports when you see the, um, you see that boxer or that fighter get that big payday. They get that big payday and then they hit that big payday, now they sitting on, and they sleeping on thousand count sheets. And then now they can't win another fight because they didn't got comfortable. So I might trick myself to never getting comfortable is to be in uncomfortable. So I always just push it off. I push it off. You know, I, I, you know, get the money, I accumulate the money through all the income streams. And then I deploy it to look back and say, okay, you got to go get more. You got to get more. You got to grind more. You got to go do more videos. You got to go get more properties. You got to go buy more businesses. You got to go find more stocks to invest in. And then so when that money accumulate again, and then that urge of comfort start coming in, like, oh, yeah, I got enough. Send it back out again to make it happen again. And those are just ways that I mind trick myself into stay grinding, stay focused, and never thinking that 
the money that I have is enough and I'm good from here. So that's, those are the different tricks that I do. So that means said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave us a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.